God bless you in the mighty name of the Astrologos, Jesus Christ. Funny we call him the Astrologos, right? Because he is the star of the show. And speaking of that, there is a tremendous light show going on in the heavens at the present time that I wanted to talk to you about. And this is the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn that will, they will converge and be in their total conjunction on the 21st of December, which is also the winter solstice. And there's a lot of chatter about this going on on the internet. There's, I've seen a lot of YouTubes on this and the paths that uh, both Jupiter and Saturn will take. And then when they finally conjunct on the 21st of December, but there's a storyline behind these two planets and what they were doing uh, before they conjuncted that will give us the meaning of this conjunction. It's amazing as I've read these different reports and, and people talking about how these planets haven't conjuncted like this since the year 1260. And those are all wonderful bits of data. And uh, that the Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter moves one constellation per year and Saturn moves one constellation every two years, then they conjunct every 20 years. They say that those 20 year periods are very pivotal in history. And yet I haven't seen one explanation on what this means. So that's the reason I'm doing this, the meaning of the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn that will culminate on December 21st of this year, 2020. What does it mean? You know, this is amazing because I realize that the whole world will be watching this. And that the conjunction of these planets, they will go down at about sunset. You'll be able to see them in the southwestern horizon of the sky. And so it'll be quite beautiful because they're two of the major planets and they'll be overlaid on top of each other to within one-tenth of a degree. They'll be overlapping each other. So it's a very sensational thing. But what does it mean? What does it mean? Does it have a meaning or is it just flashing lights in the sky? No, it does have a meaning. And to interpret the meanings, we have to look at the paths that Jupiter and Saturn have taken before they conjunct and also look at what else is going on in the heavens simultaneously to get a true reading of what is the prophetic word telling us about these two planets. Well, I've got some charts for you to look at here, but before I do and start getting into the, any of the details, the Word of God in the heavens is written in symbols, in pictures, as you would uh, say, but a symbol is bigger than a picture. A symbol is to be interpreted in different ways, whereas a picture may be only in one way. But these are symbols in the heavens. Now, the path that Jupiter and Saturn has taken in arriving in the constellation of Capricorn, which is where this conjunction will take place. They have been traveling through the constellation of Sagittarius, which is the, it's the constellation before Capricorn. They were both traveling through Sagittarius, and a funny thing happened all the way to Capricorn, that Jupiter and Saturn did what's called in astronomy a retrograde. It's an optical illusion where a faster moving object overtakes a slower moving one. And when you look at the backdrop behind the slower moving one, when you pass by it, it looks like it's going backwards, which is exactly the appearance that Saturn and Jupiter gave because both of them went into retrograde almost simultaneously. They went into retrograde. Now, a retrograde motion is a Magi's dream. That's how the heavens really show significance in the movement of the planets. Interesting, because as Jupiter and Saturn have been in this retrograde, Mars also was in a retrograde, and it has a story to tell that contributes to the whole overall picture. But where was Jupiter and Saturn, and what did they do, and what was it saying? Well, they were traveling through the constellation of Sagittarius. Now, let me explain something to you about interpreting the Word of God in the heavens. There are 48 original constellations in the God-given Word, the celestial Word. We've added 40 more through the International Astronomers Union. They understand this, we understand this, but there was originally 48 constellations when God began giving the patriarchs the truths of the heavens. And these 48 are symbols and they each have meanings. So, but the major constellation of Sagittarius 
has three amplifiers. So there are 12 major constellations, and each major constellation has three amplifiers, so that's 36 plus 12. Makes for 48 total pictures and constellation symbols that are in the heavens. So when Jupiter and Saturn were making their approach as they're going into conjunction, traveling through Sagittarius, they travel through a place in the heavens that is relative to the constellation Aura and relative to the constellation Drago because these are the constellations that when Jupiter and Saturn were traveling forward and then they backed up and then they stopped and they started going forward again, they were drawing circles around in, in Sagittarius, but this is relative to the modifiers. So what was it saying? Well, when Saturn first passed by uh, the constellation uh, in, in Sagittarius and passed by the middle part of it, that is the constellation that references the other symbol of Aura. And Aura is a picture of an upside down funeral pyre and it indicates a judgment being cast down. A judgment being thrown down. It's, it's pointed downward. You can see that in the picture here. The next constellation that it passed through, that Saturn passed through, then it passed through Draco, as did Jupiter as well. It passed through Aura and then Draco. Now Draco, as you see symbolized here, is the serpent that is being stomped and is cast down out of the heavens. So what these two constellations say to us in a simple linear truth, and that is that judgments have been made against evil and Satan is being cast down. That's what that says. Now, when Saturn passed by them, then Jupiter passed by them. So that's two times they said this. Satan has been judged and he will be cast down. Now, when they went into retrograde, Jupiter backed up and went in through Aura again. And then it turned back around and went through Aura again. So that's three times that the Word of God in the heavens says judgments have been issued against Satan and against evil. And then as it moves on forward, Saturn went through Drago, Jupiter went into Drago, then they go into retrograde and Saturn comes back into Drago then goes back through it again, that's three times through Drago, and Jupiter one time through Drago, and then he comes back through it again, that's five times. This is said that Satan is being cast down, and three times that judgment is being levied against the enemy. Now that's the background behind what these constellations are saying. Okay, I know that they're pretty, I know that they're lights in the sky, I know that they conjunct every 20 years. And it's an important historical event happens every one of those 20 years, generally speaking. But what does it mean? What is it saying to you now? What is it saying to us? It says that evil has been judged and that Satan will be cast out and be cast down, thrown down, overthrown. So do you think this could be relevant to the time in which we're living? Well, to continue the storyline, and you see the charts here, when they finally conjunct, you see that they pass over the boundary line of the constellation of Sagittarius and Capricorn, and they're in the very first part of Capricorn when they finally overlap each other. And Jupiter then will begin to take off and pass by Saturn again. But they move into Capricorn. Capricorn is a symbol, it's an ensign of a dying sacrificial goat. This is the ensign of the scapegoat, as they referenced it in the Old Testament. But it's dying. And within this constellation of Capricorn, it has an amplifier called Sagitta, which is the arrow of affliction. What is this saying? What it's saying is, Satan has been judged, and he will be cast down, and there will be affliction coming to pass on this earth as this judgment is levied against them. This is a fantastic meaning, and isn't this what we should all be desiring, that evil will be confronted and evil will be thrown down? 
and that affliction will take place in the process. That there's going to be a change of things. Even loss of life could be interpreted through this. But this is what Capricorn is telling us and these two giant planets as they converge and conjunct in Capricorn is telling us that Satan has been judged and he's cast down and affliction is coming to him and also likewise to the people of the earth. You know, it sort of reminds me of Revelation chapter 12 when it says that Satan is cast down and his wrath is great because he knows his days are few. I have said so many times through the past number of years that it's hard for me to calculate that I don't see how we cannot be living in the end times of the Bible. It certainly is exciting times. And you know, as we look at this major display in the heavens, there's another incident that's happening simultaneous to this, and a comet has appeared. And the meaning of this comet is likewise interpreted by the constellations that it passes through and is referenced. But it's called the Comet Erasmus, and I did a particular YouTube sharing on this already with the details of this comet. But it's saying the same thing that these two planets are saying when they go into conjunction. It was first seeable and recognizable, noticeable, this comet. It's called C2020S3 or Comet Erasmus. The first place it was visible, and it's never been visible with the naked eye. This is very important. The magnification, the amplitude that you can see a star is at six, or a planet is at six. This was at eight and seven. In other words, it was just almost visible with the naked eye. And we did have a comet that came through in August and September of this year that was visible with the naked eye. And it said the same thing, that the, that the redeeming shepherd is coming to gather the elect of God and that the wrath of God will be poured out on the earth after that. That's what that was saying. We're living in very turbulent times. But as this comet appeared, it came first out of the constellation of Hydra, uh, or specifically in the modifier of Corvus, which shows a vulture eating the dead flesh of the serpent Hydra. What that shows is the ultimate reprisal against your enemy is to kill him and eat him. As grotesque as that sounds, that's the symbolism in the heaven. This shows justice being administered. The constellation of Leo, of which Hydra is one of the modifiers, is all about justice, not judgment. The judgments have already been made. Now we're looking for the enforcing of the judgments. And the enforcing of judgment is called justice. Could be good, could be bad. Mercy is a judgment. And justice is where there's no punishment given. But on the other hand, when judgments have been made and justice is administered, consequences and punishment is doled out as well. This move from this constellation of Corvus showing justice into the major constellation of Libra, and Libra is the scales of justice. All about justice. And then on the 12th of December, that comet conjuncted with the planet Antares, which means the perverse one, and then on the 21st, of December, the comet will be in the foot or in the leg of Ophiuchus, the serpent stomper. What this is saying is that justice is going to be dealt, that judgments have been made and justice is coming. The heavens have been ablaze with celestial announcements about the coming of the Lord. I've been watching them personally with these eyes. For 25 years, I've been watching them. And every major phenomenal occurrence celestially that I've seen, including the tetrad eclipses, the comets, all the different eclipses, and the, and the phenomena, the conjunctions and the retrogrades have all been announcing that the judge is coming to bring justice. You know, we're living in turbulent times. Is this a prophetic word of now? I think it is. Is it a prophetic word of the future? Absolutely, we know that Satan will be cast down and that judgment will come and justice will come to the earth. Is this now? Could be. Is this a portion of history? Well, for sure it is. And what's it saying? 
What it's saying is, and you'll see this and you'll know it, whenever you see these two planets conjunct, it's going to tell you that the era of affliction is coming to the earth. And this is good news because justice will root out the evil and will cause good to flourish. I pray for the world at this time, especially for the church of Jesus Christ, that we're going to go through some tumultuous times and some upheaval. We have already been through upheaval. I had a man ask me the other day in one of my classes, is the conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn historically significant? I said, well, do you think 2020 is historically significant? Do you think that this will make the history books? I assure you that when these two planets conjunct, God's got a message in it. The next time they conjunct will be in 2040, and I've done a YouTube on that, because that potentially could be the sign of the coming of the Lord, where all five major planets will be massed in the womb of Virgo on Rosh Hashanah of the year 2040, September 8th and 9th of the year 2040. That's a good piece of information there as well. However, what I want to tell you now is I think you need to brace yourself and get ready for what's coming on the earth. And I think this conjunction is telling us that. However, let me tell you, as Jupiter moves on through Capricorn and Saturn moves on through Capricorn, it's going to take Jupiter an entire year to get through Capricorn and Saturn two years to get through Capricorn. This could go on for a while. The good news is the Lord Jesus Christ is involved in all this. And he's purging the world. And the Father God, I believe, is cleaning up the world to prepare the kingdom for Jesus Christ to take over and rule and reign for a thousand years. I think that's what the entire Great Tribulation is about. Are we in the Great Tribulation? Sure is beginning to look like it, isn't it? I can assure you for sure that when you get in the middle of the Great Tribulation and the trumpet judgments happen, five of the seven trumpet judgments are celestially caused and you'll not be able to hide that. No newscast will be able to hide those because we'll see the manifestations happen on the earth. So, in summary, these two planets passed through Sagittarius and culminated in Capricorn. So the message that we read is how they traveled. Then they retrograded, remember? And they accentuated and doubled the message. And then it came back through out of Sagittarius and culminates in Capricorn. Now remember, Jupiter moves one constellation per year and Saturn moves one constellation every two years. This could mean that this affliction is going to last on the earth for some period of time. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ and the promise of His hope, of His coming. So when you see all these things come to pass, lift up your eyes because your redemption draws nigh.